Are you looking to learn how to TIG weld? If so, this is the video for you. When I'm working with students in my program, these are three of the things all the time that I help people with the most. So right away, let's get into it. The first thing we're gonna go over here today is incorrect or excessive standoff distance. So what do I mean by this? Standoff distance is the distance from the tip of your tungsten to the workpiece itself. There will always kind of be a sweet spot as far as this distance is concerned, and it's really important to keep for whatever you're welding. This sweet spot can change depending what joint or exercise we're doing in my program, but the rules of what we're working on always remain the same. So one of the most important things we wanna make sure we avoid is arc deflection. We learn about this a lot in my program. This is something that usually, generally happens at low amperage. So basically either at the start of a pass or at the end of it. Take a look at this photo here. Do you see the scratchy stuff around the cleaning action that kind of looks like lightning? This is arc deflection. What is happening here is our arc is having trouble establishing a clean and proper puddle. Anytime somebody is working with an excessive amount of standoff distance, especially when initiating an arc, we're gonna see flickering as our arc struggles to make a proper connection with our workpiece and establish a proper puddle. We can see here what it actually looks like in slow motion. Look at this. This is cool, hey? You can see while it is struggling, we can see the arc flickering flickering back and forth, shooting off the sides of the tungsten there. When we get in nice and tight, however, we can see how things flash up much easier. We're able to establish a clean puddle much quicker. If we've moved on to exercises where we are now working with filler material, getting filler material into the weld pool is gonna be much easier to do here. Anytime you're trying to add filler material to a puddle that hasn't fully established itself yet, or if we have an arc that's becoming slightly unstable, this is gonna make learning these exercises much more difficult. In my program, we start out with the most simple stuff and we go through a series of exercises to learn how to properly establish a stable and controlled puddle. Once we learn how to do this, it's much easier once we move on to more difficult joints so we can get the best results possible. So a lot of the time, having an excessive standoff distance is gonna be caused caused by the next thing that we're gonna talk about here, and that is uncomfortable or bad posture. How often do you hear me talk about this on my channel? I've done multiple episodes on just this topic alone, and that is the importance of being extremely comfortable and being able to see clearly. Working with more difficult joints a little later down the line, if you do not have the ability to see what you're doing clearly, learning this stuff and working on it is gonna be extremely difficult. It's gonna be really tough to keep in nice and tight with your standoff distance, establishing the most controlled puddle. All of this takes a lot of paying attention. We have to make sure that we have a great start to each weld, and our profile of our weld is exactly what we want before we start moving. Extremely important. If we aren't able to see clearly, especially at the start, we aren't gonna be able to tell if our puddle needs a couple extra seconds where we can pause a little bit, give it an extra dab of filler material, fill and chill, you get the idea. Being able to see clearly is extremely important. How are your hands? Are you comfortable and able to move freely? Or if you took a picture of yourself welding, would you be crunched up at your table looking like Mr. Burns? Super bad posture, it's not gonna help you. Even for running small stuff, being comfortable is extremely important. When I'm working with students in my program, we go over posture and getting set up properly for everything we do. Going over posture, the best comfort, is something we spend a lot of time thinking about. We're gonna make sure that everybody's able to see clearly, we can stay comfortable during the duration of the weld so that we get the best results possible out of every single pass. Remember, we want to be in nice and tight. When we flash up our arc, we want it to be able to establish cleanly and efficiently like we talked about earlier. So now after we've run a few passes, this leads me to the third thing that a lot of people get stuck on or they don't even pay attention to at all. And this is something that's very common with a lot of people and that's not knowing how to properly break down their own work. This is absolutely the most important thing I have ever learned as a welder. I've done a full episode on this topic here because it's so important. You can check that one out here. It's in the description below. If you haven't seen it already, pop on over, watch that one next. One thing I'm always doing with my students is teaching them how to take a good look at what is going on with every step of every exercise we do and break down what is happening. I always provide examples of what we want things to look like, as well as all of the most common things that people get stuck on when learning these exercises in my program. Giving somebody the skill to look at their own stuff and break it down gives them a chance to understand what's happening, as well as providing information on how to fix it. Let's take a look at an example here. What we're looking at is a butt joint. I can't recall exactly off the top of my head, I think this might be the fifth or sixth exercise in the program. One of the most common things that people struggle with when working on this this exercise is what we're looking at here. Do you see it? See if you can find it for yourself. I'll wait. 
In case you don't see it, it's all good. What we are looking at is this edge here. This is where the filler material meets the parent material or base material. With adequate heat input, we can ensure better chances of penetration by fully blending our filler material into the base material at this area here. One of the most common things with this joint is this edge will not blend smoothly. And this is gonna form a weld flaw that is known as cold lap. It's not a big deal. There's definitely a few things that we can do to take care of this pretty quickly. But here is what I've worked really hard to help people out with when I'm training them. Not only are we gonna identify that there is a problem, but we are gonna learn to identify what's gonna help fix it. The next time somebody works on this exercise or is working around somebody who's practicing this one as well, they can see the problem right away and know what is gonna make a real difference in fixing it. So what's the most important part of every weld? I talk about it all the time on my channel. What is it? That's right. It's the start. So let's take a look at the start of this one here. We can see that things have not fully blended or established properly as the filler material meets the base material. If we have anything that is not in proper order at the start, it is going to be extremely tricky to get this into shape once we begin moving. The idea is to have everything organized and settled down properly at the start. This way, once we begin moving, all we have to do is maintain and keep a close watch on our variables. If we don't have everything ready to go at the start, we're gonna have one heck of a time trying to get things in order now that we've begun moving. And if you're learning and practicing this stuff for your first time, good luck trying to control all these variables all at once, once you've started moving. That's what I work on with my students. We're gonna break each exercise into simple parts so everything is understood from the bottom up. Like I said, this is the fifth or sixth actual welding exercise in the program. So by the time we've gotten to this point, there's a ton of work that somebody's put in even before reaching this joint. So that by this point, if we've run into any problems, we know exactly what's going on and we know exactly how to deal with them. Take a close look at all of your work after you've finished each pass. This is a perfect opportunity to learn. Even with 20 years of being a production TIG welder, being a CWS at the company I work for, all kinds of stuff in the trade. Every time I run a pass, whether it's just for practicing or for a serious project, I am stopping to scrutinize every single detail of it. One of the funnest things I'm doing with my career now is now being able to actually film everything I do. Being able to watch how I've done certain things is a great way to break down what happened after I finished it. I can actually go back and watch what happened while I was filming it and see exactly how everything went down. So if you got a good way to film yourself, definitely worth the time. Everything that you do welding is an opportunity to learn. Whether it's a good weld or a bad weld, take everything you can from every exercise you do. It will cut down on your learning time drastically. Go out today, do a random act of kindness for a stranger. Check out that episode I mentioned earlier. Check out my website for Pacific Arctic Welding. My name is Dusty. Phil and Chill will talk soon. Peace.